Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a menu chalkboard. Well, I saw this idea recently and thought it would be a good one to bring to the show. And basically what it is, is a chalkboard that you display a weekly menu on. Now, there's several parts to this project. One being the menu board or the chalkboard itself. And the other being the frame around it and the way that it hangs. So to start the project, we're going to start off with the chalkboard section of that. And what we need is some quarter inch thick MDF. Now the quarter inch MDF that I'll be using for this project is repurposed from an old drawer bottom. And the total dimension of the chalkboard when all is said and done will be 18 by 24. I want the frame that goes around it to be one inch wide and it's going to have a quarter inch rabbit that's going to house our chalkboard. So that will make the final dimensions of this piece of material here to be 16 and a half by 22 and a half. So I'm just going to take it over to the table saw and I'm going to cut this to size. Well, in order to convert this MDF into a chalkboard, we're going to be using some of this Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint. Now, it's some kind of special formulation that allows you to wipe the chalk off. I don't know all of the chemical properties of it, so don't even ask me because I haven't got a clue. But you need to prepare the MDF. So before you can start with this Rust-Oleum chalkboard paint, we're going to sand this with some 220 grit. Um, it had a sticker on it, which I've used a little bit of mineral spirits to wash the glue off and remove the sticker. We're going to sand this to 220, give it a good wiping to get all the dust off, and then I'm going to use a latex primer and give it a good uh, priming first with the latex. So I'm just using an all-purpose, all-in-one sealer and primer. And as I've said, it is a latex primer, so cleanup is nice and easy. You just want to give the entire chalkboard a really nice, even coat. I'm using a foam roller that's designed to give uh, a smooth surface. And once we're done, we'll put this aside and let it dry. Well, while we're waiting for that primer to dry, we can start making the frame for our chalkboard. And I've decided to make it out of walnut. You can choose whatever species you want, it, there's really no criteria. It's not even that you need a hardwood. So if pine is your thing, make it out of pine. If you like cedar, make it out of cedar. The choice here is yours. But I've chosen walnut and what I've done is joint at one edge to get a nice flat surface. And I'm gonna cut this into one inch wide strips. So we now have our four pieces cut, one inch wide. It's now time to decide on the joinery that you want to use for your frame of your chalkboard. You could use miters and splines. You can use a bridle joint. You could use half laps. You could do whatever you want, or you could do what I want to do, and that is a simple butt joint with some dowels for strength. Um, I don't want to, any kind of fancy design elements on this. I just want a simple butt joint and a simple frame. And that's what we're going to do with this. So because of that, I need to cut two pieces at their final length, which in this case will be 24. Um, but because our side pieces will be sandwiched between our two walls, 
I need to subtract the one inch width of each of these piece in order to get the length of our cross braces. So 18 inches will be our final dimension minus one, two inches. It will give us 16 inches. So I need two pieces cut at 16 inches long and two pieces cut at 24 inches long. Well, at this point, it's time for a dry fit of our frame. And I've got eight shot made one inch long dowels here. They're quarter inch diameter. And I'm just going to dry fit this frame together just to make sure that everything fits the way that it should. And once we're happy with that fit, really, we just have to glue this frame together. And you can see there that the frame fits just fine. So I'm gonna get some glue and glue this together and once it's dry, we're going to give it a good sanding. And then once you get it clamped together, just check your frame for square to make sure that it is all, well, squared up. <laughs> This one's a little off, so that means one of my joints isn't pulled in completely. So I'm going to square this up and we are going to clean up the squeeze out and then let it dry. So now with the frame all glued up and uh, we're waiting on that, some time has passed and the primer is dried on our chalkboard. So I'm going to give this now its first coat of chalkboard paint. It'll probably take several coats to get a nice even finish on here. Once again, I'm using a foam roller for smooth surfaces and we'll just coat this as best we can and then we'll let this dry. Now, if you guys are looking at this and panicking and saying, oh my gosh, it's not going on evenly, don't worry about it. It will take several coats and you know, you're better off to put several thin coats on it as opposed to one thick coat. I mean, we're not in a hurry, right? I mean, how quickly do you guys need a chalkboard to be able to draw on? And now we'll leave that until tomorrow morning. Well, here it is the next day, 
And the very first thing that we're going to do is give this board a light sanding. And once we get the sanding done, we're going to clean all the dust off it and then give it a second coat of the chalkboard paint. Like I said earlier, don't be too concerned right now that it's not fully covered or it's not uniformly black. It's going to take you several coats. So I'm going to hit this with coat two and put it aside and then we can turn our attention back to the frame that we were making for it. With the second coat on the chalkboard done and we're waiting on that to dry, we can turn our attention to the frame. So we're going to give this a good sanding all the way around and I want to do a round over. I'm only going to do a slight one, just a 1 8 inch round over and I want to do it over all the outside edges, both front and back, and on the front inside face, just to soften it up a little bit. Well, now that the routing and the sanding is done, we're going to take the frame over to the router table because we need to route a rabbit to accept our chalkboard. I have a bearing guided rabbit bit in here. And what I'm going to do is cut a quarter inch wide dado that is going to be a half of an inch deep. You don't want to take this all in one pass. So we're going to make multiple passes to avoid tear out and we're going to work it until we get it to be a half an inch deep on the back side of our chalkboard. is pretty much the frame for our chalkboard done. Um, you may have noticed in that last clip I was actually running this on the bit in the opposite way that we normally are used to. I was running it with the spin. That is called climb routing and the reason I did that is because initially I noticed I was getting tear out that bit digging in was actually grabbing chunks of the walnut and tearing it out. And by climb routing, you can really prevent that tear out. I would never suggest doing climb routing with a handheld router, but on the router table, as long as you have a firm grip on your piece and you keep your hands away, which you should be doing anyway, you should have no problems. Now we have in the corners here of our rabbit, they're rounded. And I'm not worried about that. In fact, what I'm going to do is when the board is completely dry and ready to go, uh, I may sand the board round to fit that. Um, the other option there, of course, is to chisel this out. But I just think it, it'll be easier for me to round the board. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing when the board actually gets mounted in here. So that is it for the frame and now we need to move on to the way that it mounts. And for that we're going to be using a French cleat. So I'm going to check the stock of the uh, wood rack and see what I have there as far as maple goes either quarter inch or five sixteenths of an inch thick. Now for those of you who don't know how a French cleat works, it's basically a piece of board that is ripped at 45 degrees and what happens is this piece here is going to get glued at the back of our chalkboard and this piece will get mounted on the wall and you can see that it's got that 45. When this is mounted to the wall, the other piece of course will just hook onto it and prevent it from falling. And that is basically how a French cleat works. So it's not really rocket science, but 
uh, this will be the way that it, it'll be hung with the French cleat and this top part of the French cleat will double on the top as the means to hold the top end of our chalkboard in place as well. Well, truthfully now with the French cleat cut uh, and the frame and everything else, there's really not much more that I can do until I get all of the coats of chalkboard paint on the chalkboard that I want. Uh, I have one coat of primer and two coats of chalkboard paint at this time and I'm probably going to go a third coat and a fourth coat to make sure I get really good coverage. So I'll put a finish here on the frame and other than that there's really not much more that I can do at this point in time uh, until the chalkboard itself is ready. So. I guess I'll see you when that is all done and I'll see you for the assembly. Well, it's been three days and during that three days, the chalkboard itself has received its first coat of primer plus three coats of chalkboard paint and the frame itself has received three coats of a satin finish varnish. So now it's time to put the two of them together. And the first thing that we need to do is take the corners off of our chalkboard. Now for this, there are two methods that you can use. You can cut the corners of your rabbit here square, or you can round off the corners of your chalkboard. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna round off the corners over on the belt sander, and then we're going to dry fit the chalkboard into place on the frame. And now, if you shaped it right, you can just sit it in your frame. And now it's time to secure it in the frame. And for that, we need to grab our French cleat. Well, the very first thing we want to do is glue the top half of our French cleat right up top here, just like that, to hold our chalkboard into place. From there, we're going to place finishing nails all the way around, kind of like a picture frame and hold the entire chalkboard into the frame where it belongs. Well, this last step is completely optional, and that would be the lettering. Now, if you don't want to do the lettering and you just want a regular chalkboard, then don't do the lettering. But if you are going to do the lettering, there's many different ways you could do it. You could use paint. You could just use chalk and draw it on, and then it's not so permanent. For me, I'm going to be cutting some vinyl and applying the vinyl to the chalkboard. Um, that process in itself is another whole show altogether. So I'm just going to skip ahead to the final product so you can see how we made out with that. And there you have it. A menu chalkboard. Guys, this is a great little project. And although there are some specialty items like that chalkboard paint, the rest of it is really some pretty simple stuff. Just some MDF and walnut or cherry, maple, whatever you want to make the frame out of, and you're done. Now, I will point out that this chalkboard paint is a little expensive. It's a little pricey, and uh, you may want to look into that and, and see exactly how much of it you need, because to be honest with you, a little goes a long way and you don't want to buy too much because it is somewhat expensive. I'm not so sure what makes it special, but it is a specialty item and everybody knows as soon as it's a specialty item, the price goes through the roof. 
So I'll put a link in the description below for the chalkboard paint and the rest is up to you. Guys, I really hope you're going to try this project as it's a lot of fun. And even if it's not something for your kitchen, it could be something for your shop to scribble down your quick little dimensions on or to make a quick note and that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be for the kitchen. It could be for your child. For your child to have something in their room to play with and to draw on and that sort of thing. Why not paint it on metal as this chalkboard paint will work on metal and now they have a magnetic chalkboard that they can play with, you know, those plastic magnetic letters and shapes and that sort of thing. So just something to keep in mind for maybe a future project for, oh, I don't know, your wife, your kids, your grandkids, your mother, whoever. Guys, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future show. I, I want to thank you for tuning in this week, guys. It's been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.